direct personal communication between teacher and student is essential in any learning situation, but it's especially critical when teachers and students may not be in daily face-to-face -face contact, as in the case of online instruction. That's why it is important to build opportunities for regular and frequent one-to-one -one communication into online courses not just to convey information about the course and content, but also to establish that personal connection. There are times when a student will say, Ms. Kip, I really hate your content, but I really, really liked you. I liked that relationship with you, and that was why I worked in the class. Students need the encouragement, which comes from knowing that they're being taught by a real person who's invested in their success. No matter how interesting a video is, how amazing a simulation is, when they know there's a real person on the other end of that course who cares about them, that's the most engaging thing that could ever be in an online course. I use communication tools within the course to establish effective relationships with students. For example, we have a welcome discussion, more like an icebreaker, where the students become acquainted with each other. The students provide me with information um, about themselves, and I provide them with information about myself as well. I'm always striving to have better and more authentic communication with my students. Um, so I'll start the course with the students introducing themselves to me over email, and we'll, that'll kind of usually prompt a small exchange over email to get to know each other. And this has definite advantages in presenting course content. You make sure that you know that this particular student doesn't have a mom, so you're not going to have an assignment where you say, think about your mom and what you're going to do for Mother's Day. Every learning management system provides a diverse range of tools for communicating with students individually and as a group. Even more are available from third-party sources. In my online courses, students are communicating to me through the message system. I'm communicating through, to them through announcements. So for example, I might leave an announcement that poses a question for the day and then ask them to respond to me and they can do that through the message system. Other times we might have a chat on the phone or through texting, uh, also through our instant messaging, which can be audio, video, or even app share. And I also email my students consistently. And I email them to check in on their progress. For example, they may have taken a vacation and I wanted to check in on them to make sure that they are completing their work and posting their assignments on time. But on an individual basis, the most effective communication tools will depend on the student. When I first started teaching online, I was using email as my primary form of communication with students. Uh, which I thought would be incredibly successful until I learned that students don't really check email. So my secret weapon has become text messaging. They might be a texter and that might be the avenue that they choose to do most often. Other times you might have a student that prefers to email or message. And then there's some that just like that personal touch. So you might use a video message or you might make a phone call or an archived lesson where they can see, your, see you and hear your voice. I don't think that it really matters what type of communication you use. The importance is that you're establishing that student-teacher relationship. Where teaching is actually taking place, that's happening in all that other communication that's happening. The texting, the phone calls, the messages, the instant messaging, the back and forth between the announcements and the feedback that you're giving each student. To learn more about INACOL National Standards for Quality Online Teaching, visit us on the web at www.inacol.org.